You're watching the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on vectors and projectiles. The topic of this video is relative velocity and riverboat problems. Here's the two questions we wish to answer. What's meant by the term relative velocity? And when a boat moves up, down, or across the river, what effect does the river current have on the boat's motion? Let's get started. In this video, we'll be discussing objects that are moving and moving up on a platform or within a medium that is also moving. And the result is that an observer who's not on that platform or not in that medium would observe a velocity that's quite different than the velocity of the object that's moving. For instance, in this simulation, we observe a riverboat moving within water. And the water is moving. It's called current. And because of the river current, the observed speed of this riverboat, as observed by an observer on the shore, is different than that as observed by the person within the boat. We're going to discuss in this video how to calculate these velocities. For now, let's just introduce the phrase relative velocity, that the velocity of an object is relative to the reference frame of the observer. Let's consider a small plane that moves with a velocity of 200 kilometers per hour south with respect to the air. And the air is moving with respect to the ground at 50 kilometers per hour in any number of directions. In the situation on the far left, we see what's called a tailwind. The wind is blowing the plane forward. And the result is that an observer on the ground would observe a relative velocity from their reference frame of 250 kilometers per hour. In the middle, there is a headwind. The plane is flying against the wind, and because it is, the velocity as observed by an observer on the ground is 150 kilometers per hour. In the case on the far right, what we notice is that the plane is flying with a side wind, and so Pythagorean theorem would have to be used to determine the resultant velocity as observed by that stationary observer on the ground, and it would be approximately 206 kilometers per hour. As another application of this idea of relative velocity, let's consider a canoe that can paddle at 2 meters per second with respect to the water. But it's river water, so it's moving, and it's moving south at 1 meter per second with respect to an observer on the shore. And let's ask the question, what velocity would an observer on the shore observe of the boat traveling within this moving platform, the river? In the case of paddling up the river, what we would observe is that the boat is paddling against the river flow. And so the river velocity subtracts from the boat velocity, and the resultant velocity is one meter per second north. And in the case of moving down the river, it's moving with the river flow. And so the river velocity adds to the boat's velocity, and an observer on the shore would observe a three meter per second velocity for the boat. In each of these cases, the observer on the shore is observing the resultant velocity of these two simultaneous, simultaneous velocities. And it ends up being one meter per second north for paddling up the river and three meters per second south when paddling down the river. Now let's consider a boat that heads directly across a river. And the river is moving with respect to the shore. So an observer on the shore would observe the resultant of these two simultaneous movements. A common problem is worded often like this. A boat heads east across a 140 meter wide river with a velocity of four meters per second with respect to the water. And the water is moving three meters per second south with respect to the shore. And three common questions are, determine the resultant velocity of the boat, the crossing time of the boat, and the distance the boat travels down the river. We're going to look at each of these questions separately. So let's approach the first question. What's the resultant velocity of the boat? Sometimes worded, what's the velocity of the boat with respect to an observer on the shore? In order to do this, we have to add the two simultaneous velocities, the four meters per second east for the boat and the three meters per second south for the river. The resultant stretches from the tail of the first vector to the arrowhead of the last vector, and its magnitude can be determined using Pythagorean theorem. So we say r squared equals 3 squared plus 4 squared. Therefore, r is the square root of the whole thing. The square root of 25 is 5.0 meters per second. 
Now to determine the direction of this resultant, we have to calculate the angle theta within that right triangle. The tangent of theta is the ratio of the side opposite, the river velocity, divided by the side adjacent, the boat velocity. That is to say, theta is equal to the inverse tangent of 3 divided by 4. That comes out to be 37 degrees, the angle theta in the triangle. Now we have to express that as a direction. We have two choices. One of them is to say 37 degrees south of east, and the other is to say that's 323 degrees wrapped around beginning at east, counterclockwise, past south, and another 53 degrees past south, which gives us 323 degrees counterclockwise from east. The second question is to determine the crossing time of the boat. The time to go 140 meters from the west side of the river to the east side of the river. I can use the formula d equal v times t. It expresses a distance time velocity relationship. The only distance I know is 140 meters. I have to put that into the equation. But to solve for time, I need to select the correct velocity. There's now three of them. There's a 4.0 meter per second east, a 3.0 meters per second south, and a 5.0 meters per second, which we just calculated, that heads south and east. The velocity I wish to use is the velocity of the boat traveling eastward across the river. Since I have an east to west distance, I need to use an east to west velocity. And so I set up the equation to solve for time. I say t equal d divided by v. And I substitute 140 meters in for d in the eastern velocity of 4.0 meters per second for v. And I end up with 35 seconds. The final question of this three-step problem is to determine the distance that the boat travels downstream. So because it's a distance question, I need to use the distance equation again. Distance is equal to velocity times time. And I want to calculate a downstream distance, a down the river north to south distance. And because I do, I need a north to south velocity. It's this 3.0 meters per second that describes how fast I travel southward down the river. And so I have to combine that velocity with 35 seconds to determine the distance traveled downstream in the 35 seconds. When I do my math, I get 105 meters downstream. Now it's your turn to practice, and practice with this problem here. So pause the video, read the problem, solve it, and when you're ready, press play so that you can see the solution. And here is the solution. One concept that riverboat problems teach us is that perpendicular components of motion are independent of each other. As you see here in these three animations, the river velocity is different, but the time to head east across the river is the same in every case. The platform on which the boat is traveling is heading south, but the boat heads east, and this southward velocity of the river has no effect upon the eastward motion of the boat. It takes the same time to travel eastward across the river in all three situations. Perpendicular components of motion are independent of each other. And this will be the topic of our next video. Well, I hope you've gained some comfort with the concept of relative velocity and how to predict the effect of the river velocity upon a boat that heads up, down, or across the river. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making this learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out? If you enjoyed the video, like the video and subscribe to the channel. And if you have a question or a comment, leave it in the section down below. Now for the action plan. At our website, we have a section called the calculator pad. If you go to the vectors and projectiles chapter and check out questions 19 through 21, you'll find three problems just like what we did here near the end of this video. And we have a riverboat simulator in our physics interactive sections. You'll find links to it and all of these resources 
in the description section below. It's a playful way to investigate how the river velocity affects the time to cross it and the distance traveled downstream. There's a concept builder just waiting for you to practice your principles you've learned in this video. You'll find a link to it in the section, in the description section below. And finally, if you ever need a reference, go no further than our physics classroom tutorial. You'll find the physics concepts in this video discussed in an easy to understand manner with lots of examples. Whatever you do, best of luck to you.